Welcome back to episode 112 of the Guardian Project podcast. I'm your host, Andy and Coyle. What do pilots do when they need to talk to another pilot in flight? I don't know. They contact other planes. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> I like that a lot. <laughs> oh, man. You can really propel your way into a joke like that. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm your other host, Mike. And I really thought the randomness of dice rolling was going to increase my chances of winning. But in reality, it just guarantees that I will die. Die. Please listen carefully. With Maybe dice. multiple. Yes, yes with, all the time. With, with dice. Yeah. Lots of dice. Lots of fun. <laughs> and this is the podcast where we talk about all things Magic the Gathering. But mostly Commander. So I got to play in store at an LGS for the first time this weekend since... February of 2020. Mm -hmm. It was pretty great. Not going to lie. Yeah, showed up, fun. Got a free donut. Mm. There's free donuts on Sundays. Mm -hmm. So I got a donut. Glazed donut. I didn't want anything. No fillings in my donuts. That's right. Gla well, glazed donut's the healthy choice. Uh, Is it? Probably. Because it's like you lighter just, than a cake donut. But isn't like a like one of those ones you can get at like a cider mill plain i see i get I plain donuts at donut. cider mill so that is kind of cakey yeah i think yeah. that i think it's considered a cake donut I'm, i don't quote me on that though because I, I don't know for sure I don't know. so i got that and then we played i played two games i lost both games it's mm -hmm. fine um i lost two i got i lost two. one was a ganti lord of luxury deck which was cool because they flickered ganti with a um the the closet conjurer's closet mm -hmm. at the end of every turn and they had they had played played or flickered ganti like seven times that game nice they didn't find many good things and they kept targeting me because i was playing the obvious teams so they were mm. looking for a good legendary and right. at one point there i can't take anything and they go uh the one the other the other person goes if that's a uh, if it's just all lands, you, you do still take one. You still take and he one. Goes, it's all lands. I was like, all right, at least I'm not getting any lands. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I played against that. I didn't see any new. I played mm -hmm. the newest commander with Neambia Steam Speaker since since last year. Everybody played old commanders. Interesting. There was Marchesa the Black Rose, mm -hmm. Teza Karlov, mm -hmm. uh, Gishaf. Okay, yeah. And then. Um, there were Kineas and Tiro, and I mean they were all they were all old commanders. Did you see so, new cards in uh, those old commander decks? Um, there was someone, someone. Sh I mean, we I saw a dam, but it didn't okay. get cast. Okay, so, okay. So that showed up. Mm -hmm. Um, there was. See, Eldrain came out before we. Yeah. Before, so feels... there was a Sir Conrad, but right. that that wasn't new. Mm -mm. No. no. Nothing new. No new cards. Interesting. I really didn't see. I didn't see anything new. Well, I guess no. this is going to be the difference between you know people who have been playing throughout the pandemic online, constantly upgrading their decks and stuff, versus the people that are just coming right back out, finally get to play their Gonti deck that they even if they <laughs> wanted to couldn't play it online on webcam. Yeah, so. I know there were there were some new cards in it. So other tables had new stuff. There was I don't know, there was another table. I saw a Chatterfang deck. Mm -hmm. I saw a Zerzoth Chaos deck, and I went Bleh, as I walked past the Love table. It. it was it was uh, one of of our patrons was playing that i got to see them up there um yeah so i saw i saw a new decks i just not just not at my table but it was fun mm -hmm. um five dollars and um you know you can win store credit at least that's how our lgs does it so now, yeah. did, did you know that I was in the store while you were playing? Magic? Did you end up? Yeah. Go, you did end up. Did yeah. you pick up sleeves they had? Yeah. So RLGS had had some Dragon Shield sleeves on sale for five dollars. Yeah, they're all art mat sleeves. Okay, that I could see at least the ones okay. I looked at. Okay, and then they have they have a, a select group of set booster boxes for mm -hmm. seventy five dollars. Yes, yeah, so when I got there, there was only Strixhaven left. Okay. Okay. And I I had a I had a five dollar coupon okay. at the store, so I got a free pack of pack of sleeves. That's mm. all that's all I got. I looked at of course I looked at all the cards and all that and uh talked to some people there that I haven't seen in a while. I was in the back room. I know. I know Jody told me. I did I just didn't go back to say hi. Wow. I didn't want to disrupt you. Wow. I knew you were gonna be playing a complicated blue white oh. commander deck <laughs> and then you just couldn't be disrupted during it was that. it was but I showed up I showed up to play blue white, so that is that is what I did. So um now I can say I've done it. And then it started pouring before I left. Mm -hmm. And I stood there looking at my car going, you're so close yet <laughs> so far away in sideways rain. Yeah. It's, yeah. Especially with, <laughs> with a uh, backpack full of a lot of expensive pieces of cardboard. Yeah. 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 
Well, cool. Uh, hopefully I get to join you for the next one. Would be fun. Um, next thing on the list here we have, uh, there's a potential spoiler. So we wanted to, uh, if you if you don't want to hear about spoilers, uh, please mute and unmute and we'll, we'll keep this uh, in under in under yeah, 15 not seconds. E- not even a card. Not a, it's a potential new set. Yeah. Um, so there was two domains that were registered uh, by Wizards of the Coast that people are assuming are going to be some of the new sets that we're going to see. Those two domains being Kamigawa Neon Dennis- Dynasty and Dominaria United. Uh, Wizards of the Coast is going to have a release on September 24th where they're going to talk about their full lineup of sets in 2022. At that point, we will see whether or not these actually become sets. Maybe. Hopefully. I don't know. I don't have, I don't, I didn't have particularly care about going back to either of these, but they're very popular. You know, I love she You do. But what if she is not there now? Or she is like dope now. What if she is driving a Tron motorcycle? I, new commander. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Dominary United, some of the conversation online is trying to determine whether or not this will be the culmination of the potential Phyrexian story arc. I just want to be able Who to knows? I just want to be able to turn Karn into a boom pile. That's all I want. I want a boom I want a boom pile Karn. You want a boom pile Karn. Mm-hmm. I want Karn, but he is as, boom, as, a, as, as a boom a, pile. as an explosion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see cuz Ashiok, I know the story with Ashiok was that Ashiok heard about the Phyrexians and was going to go check it out. So mm-hmm. maybe we'll see Ashiok soon. I would love to see Ashiok. If think, that's all true. Not, it could, this it, literally could be nothing. We we talked about it. This could be a new video game because uh, you know Kamigawa Neon Dynasty could, could be, be Dynasty Warriors, but Kamigawa style. If you are familiar with the Dynasty Warriors uh, video game franchise, which I am not, uh, it's like the Bre- the Breath of the Wild um, fighting game. The newest Breath of the Wild game is a Dynasty Warrior style game. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, it could be that. Yes. And that was longer than 15 seconds. I'm sorry. So we are now back and hopefully <laughs> you have avoided that. Ready? You're back now. Okay. Spoilers <laughs> over. Exactly. And we've mentioned this a few weeks, uh, for a few weeks now, uh, Patreon announcements. Um, we want to thank you, everyone, um, who upped your pledge or became a patron um, for the new swag that we have. Our tokens arrived early so that's exciting so we are going to be mailing those out and then we ordered the guardian project card if you are going to be getting obviously that card and the tokens we are going to wait to send yours out we're going to send them together so you can just get them at one time so um, you may see your package arrive in the next couple of weeks um, regardless because we should have those tokens pretty quickly they they arrived the other ones arrived pretty fast yeah we should have them actually next week Okay, so if you're getting the Guardian Project card, then we'll probably just ship those out next week. Yep. And then um, we are, like we mentioned last week, we are looking at potentially a storefront of some sort and then actually putting that on our website as well. So um, we had some folks at the LGS mention, hey, I would like that playmat because I did take my the new Guardian Project playmat to uh, my LGS. So we're still working on that. Um, but if you want to become a patron, you can head to patreon.com slash guardian project pod and donate for any dollar amount and uh, also join our discord if you're not there yet. And if you're looking for another way to support the podcast, whatever platform you are enjoying the podcast on now, if you could like, subscribe, review and comment, we would really appreciate it. Yes. And you can find us online at the guardian project podcast.com. You can find our social media on Twitter at guardian pod and our gameplay videos at youtube.com slash the guardian project. And if you want to email us, uh, you can hit us up at guardian project pod at gmail.com coil. What is on the agenda today? I don't know why I said it like that. I was waiting for the word today. I'm not going to lie <laughs> <laughs> on the agenda today. Uh, we are going to be talking about the AFR commander precon. So we very, very recently had an opportunity to play with these commander precons right out of the box, all against each other um, with the scrap trawlers. And uh, we're going to talk about our experience in the one game that we got to play in it, how we liked the decks that we played, what we saw out of the other decks, and then we'll break down the deck lists a little bit too and talk about some of the nice reprints and new cards that we're getting in these decks. It's time to unpack the deck boxes. That might have been the most literal 
the boxes. I'm, I'm actually opening a box as we speak. Yeah, the, the pull tab. Remember, the pull tab's on the bottom. Don't try to open it from the top. I've seen so many people trying to just rip it over from the top and carry it out. <laughs> so we did get to play, and I, going into it, did not know anything about what my deck was going to do, other than I obviously watched all the... the, the I, I, partake in spoiler season mm -hmm. uh, or preview season and i do look something but i was not 100 percent versed in the deck as we went into the into the stream i um was reading cards to try to figure out what they did mm -hmm. i was missing the triggers because the deck that i played had a lot of triggers so yeah, i guess yeah. before we start i played the prosper tonebound deck yes and i played the galia kindler of hope deck so um my deck was all about playing things from exile which was really great. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, it's kind of like the like I with the way I was looking at it, it's like the Rakdos version of Vega, where Vega cares about casting stuff yes. other than your hand, but instead of getting card draw, you're getting treasures. Which is great because I feel like red black could use well, it could use both, but I appreciated the treasure yeah. because the cards I had were so expensive. I think it synergizes really well with that new the new painter that they but we'll talk about that in a minute. We will. Yes. Let's start with your deck. Sure. Okay. So uh, my deck is called the Aura of Courage, uh, featuring Galena, Kindler of Hope. So Galena is a four mana elf knight. There's no N. There's no N? It's Galia. Ga Galia. Galia. It's not Galena. Go isn't isn't Galena a, an actual card though? I don't know. Continue. <laughs> if it's not, it's gonna be soon. So Galia, Kindler of Hope, is a four mana four four elf knight. So for one, a green white and a blue so that's the bant uh wedge yeah okay. i it's always mix bant. my i always mix my wedges it's, and it's my shards shard. okay it's bant shard. shard uh so four four with vigilance that says you may look at the top card of your library anytime uh literally just reading vigilance on this card for the first time i tapped this creature so many times yesterday uh you may look at the top card of your library anytime and you may cast aura and equipment spells from the top of your library and when you cast an equipment spell this way it gains when this equipment enters the battlefield attach it to target creature you control so a very, very strong um, ability there to uh, cheat equipments uh, to attach. So, it's like you know. Sigarda's Aid, but all from the top of the library. That's right. So it's like Sigarda's Aid and Elsha of the Infinite combined into one. It is. So Sigarda's Aid is just an, it's an enchantment. It also would work really well. Oh, for sure. For so sure. it says when, it, when an, uh, an equipment enters the battlefield, you can just equip it to a creature. Yes. It also allows you to cast equipments at flash speed is really good i forgot that text was on it i mostly like the free equip <laughs> well yeah that's also super nice um but you know this this deck i goldfished it one time before we played and i was talking about it i'm like yeah i goldfished this and the ramp in it was really good i had my commander out on turn three and then on turn four there happened to be a colossus hammer on the top of my library that i could cast for for one mana and free equip to my commander and in goldfishing i was like I, I it, it blew my mind how good the deck was in goldfish okay, it's not going to work that way in the real game and then we started the real game and it worked exactly the same way just no colossus yeah, no colossus hammer but like just the amount of ramp in the deck uh being able to cast equipment from the top of your library feels like card advantage because you don't have to use any of the cards in your hand um curse of verbosity three mana uh curse aura this is uh, enchant target player when that player when you attack that player you get to draw a card and uh, actually, it's whenever a creature attacks that player, you draw a card, and then uh, any opponent does the same thing. Um, that helped fuel my hand the entire game, I, and, and it and it didn't trigger every single turn either. It was just a couple cards to trickle in is all you really needed, and, and it helped lower my life it the entire game. That it that is true. <laughs> it did uh, incentivize attacking Andy, but you had a death touch blocker. I had two curses on me that game, so I mean it, it happens. The, well, that other curse got moved around a couple times, but it, but it definitely targeted you. On me That's first. right. You, you were targeted with it for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean. I think honestly, just the the reprints in this deck make this deck strong in itself. I mean, you have heroic intervention, uh, two mana, top notch, two mana instant uh, that says um, you creatures you control or permits you control gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Um, two mana. Yeah, this card was over ten dollars. This card was printed in Kaladesh and reprinted one time since then. It's um, still a $9 card, basically. Yeah, it, it, fantastic, fantastic. I didn't get the opportunity to play it, but but um, it would not have saved me in any instance. It would not have. I, uh, it, as most Voltron decks uh, 
die i died to edict effects mostly <laughs> um but a, i also see imprisoned in the moon in the deck it's not a particularly expensive card but it's a three mana enchantment aura it says enchant target permanent becomes a colorless land uh that taps for a colorless really good for shutting people's commanders down a mean way to do it a very mean card we've learned <laughs> we don't play it very often for that reason I, I i do play it in my arden aura's deck because i can move it from one creature to another okay. and that's that's my solution to the meanness behind it um pure, i can be mean to you all <laughs> <laughs> pure still paladin um a human knight for uh white white says whenever equipment enters the battlefield under your control you may draw a card and has metal metal craft so if you control three or more artifacts uh, equipments you can control have equipped for zero this is played in in modern um in colossus hammer decks in modern right now uh, and so um it's a little bit expensive because people are playing four ofs of it in, in another format so it's nice to see that reprint here um nature's lore we did see reprints got some um nice new artwork we just saw nature's lore get reprinted in um or no we saw three visits get reprinted not nature's lore nature's right. lore was a reprint in mystery booster so not a substantial reprint um, so it's nice to see that. And we have some new artwork. Um, Sword of the Animist, always a great reprint. Yeah, Sword of the Animist is probably one of the reasons you had as much mana as you mm -hmm, did. That was great. Sure. Because that that deck also has a Mishra's Factory, so you're able to turn that into a creature. That was cool. Which was great because we're like, oh, well, I guess the sword. Oh, we forgot you have that. So mm -hmm. you were you were ramping. That, yeah. was, that was great. Yeah, I was able to ramp on turn four by swinging with my Mishra's with, a, yeah, with the Sword of the Animist on it. It was awesome. Um, I know a lot of people were talking about Utopia Sprawl, being such an expensive card also sees a lot of modern play um and, and it saw a reprint in a commander pre-con so you know utopia sprawl also like an eight dollar card that, that saw reprinted um but on top of these expensive reprints uh, there's a lot of other land auras in here to help you ramp out along with artifacts and to help you ramp out like arcane signet uh, and those kinds of stuff too so this deck ramped so so well to the point where i had a hand of like four lands and three spells and i didn't want to cast anything um, to commit to the board more because people were casting board wipes left and right um, this deck does play a few board wipes so uh, winds of wrath three white white destroy all creatures that aren't uh, enchanted they can't be regenerated so that's really good obviously for your voltron decks um, but a new board wipe they have valiant endeavor um, i would i had in my hand and decided not to cast it because the game was going pretty long um, it wasn't super advantageous when i had it available but it's something that i may consider running in uh, my abs and tokens deck coming up so valiant endeavor says roll so for four white white you get a sorcery it says roll 2d6 and choose one destroy each creature with power greater than or equal to the result then create a number of two two white knight creature tokens with vigilance equal to the other result so if you are playing a low to the ground token strategy this is going to be a good board wipe for you and potentially a card that you want to slip out of this deck and into some of your other ones um so the last thing kind of we wanted to talk about is like the upgrade ability of the decks um talking about uh, a voltron deck um this is infinitely upgradable you can depending on your budget throw in swords of x and y we can throw in cigar as aid to help equip these uh, things um, and you can go from equipments or auras or both uh, you can cast both from the top of your library the auras are not creature auras that you're limited to you can cast curses from the top of your library there's definitely a lot of unique things you can do with galia um, there is one alternate commander of Stormgald frost giant jarl uh, a 7-7 seven, seven for 7, so 4 in our Bant Colors that has Ward 3. Other creatures you control have Ward 3, and whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, you choose one uh, or both. Where a target creature has base power and toughness 7-7 seven, seven until end of turn, and target creature has base power and toughness 1-1 one, one until end of turn. Doesn't fit super well into the strategy, but also strapping a 7-7 seven, seven that's got Ward 3 with a bunch of equipments and auras is going to get you there eventually. Um, so that's kind of been my experience with this deck. I think it's cool. Honestly, I'm probably going to rip it apart for parts, though. Um, so, Andy, tell me about your experience with Prosper. Yeah, so I played Prosper Tomebound. So Prosper is a 1-4 Tiefling Warlock for 4 black and red. It has Death Touch and says at the beginning of your end step, exile the top card of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play that card. So if it's a land, you can still play it. Um, and it says, whenever you play a card from exile, you create a treasure token. So um, I 
didn't know how much play from exile there was going to be in the deck and there was actually quite a bit so um i do like playing cards with flashback the deck does have have a few ways to do that um i flipped a couple of cards at end of turn that were instants it was cool to have a rakdos charm sitting up at one point i did have a chaos warp up at one point that i did not even use kind of wanted to but i had a bedevil in hand and everyone knew i had a bedevil in hand so i um I held that up in case Coil's commander was coming at me because I was afraid of it. And then it didn't, it didn't, which we all kind of had to work together to swing at the red green deck at one point, just because it was kind of, it was, it was kind of a problem. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, uh, the, the secondary commander that comes, comes with this deck is Karazakar, the eye tyrant. So it's a five, five beholder for three black red. That says whenever you attack a player tap target, um, creature that player controls and you goad it. And then whenever an opponent, attacks another one of your opponents you and that attacking player each lose life and draw a card so there is card advantage in this deck oh yeah um i felt the pain though because i do think that i drew four or five cards off of this so i did lose four or five life i had a little life gain at one point because i did get to uh use a rebound card that had someone sack and i got to gain a little life that was my commander both times, by the way. Um, it was, <laughs> and for good reason. For good reason. So I did play Consuming Vapors. It um, it's a sorcery that says target player sacrifices a creature. You gain life equal to that creature's toughness with rebound. So you exile it as it resolves. If you cast from your hand, you cast it again. So um, I did think, to be fair, I did think Coil had the mana up to turn one of his other things into a creature. Turns out he did not. He did not. So he had to sack his commander, and then he replayed his commander, and again did not have the mana, and then yeah. and sacked his commander again. Because I, did, so, I didn't think I'd be targeted again, but I was targeted again. You you were. <laughs> and, and I'm glad, though, because at one point you did have two life gain equipment, and mm. I was like, this is it's going to be too much, because you had a basilisk collar, and you also had... Um, it's the, the hammer, the loxodon, not loxodon, no. warhammer. Uh, it is the behemoth sledge. Yeah. And so I, I go, Coil's going to gain too much life. And I think just slowing down. And also at that time, Coil did have like 10 mana versus R, mm-hmm. not much. <laughs> so um, I I did get to um, cast a couple of cards from from Exile. Um, I I played Hurl, Hurl Through Hell. That was really cool. W- one of the mechanics I didn't think that I was going to like as much as I did in this was Cascade. Mm-hmm. So I got to play Cascade, um, Cascade cards quite a, quite a bit. Um, and then, honestly, one of the cards that I think doesn't get played enough in here is Ignite the Future. Mm-hmm. That card is just a lot of fun to play. Um, XL the top three cards of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play those. If this spell was cast from a graveyard, you may also cast them without paying their mana cost. Has flashback for seven and 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 a red, so eight mana total. But um I got when I when I flashed it back, I had two good spells and a and a land, which was the land I needed for Perfect. a turn. Yeah. So uh, and making three treasures off of that alone was great. But I will I will say um the 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 piece de resistance mm-hmm. uh, of the deck and, and the win con here, which I fortunately drew and did not have stolen from me when someone did make me reveal my hand and could have cast something from it mm. was a marionette master. So that was in my hand when that happened. Gotcha. So marionette master um, is a one, three human artificer four black, black that has fabricate three. So you can either put three counters on it or make three servos. Um, but it says whenever an artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, target opponent loses life equal to marionette master's power. So it's, it's power was at four. Mm-hmm. And I had seven treasures. Now, to be fair, I was doing things and Coil goes, hold on, you're in one in one more treasure, you're going to have enough that you can kill me. Right. And I said, don't you worry, I'm not going to send these because mm-hmm. Coil was not the problem at the time. Right. So he let me he let me keep them, which was great because we did get someone down from 37 to like 21 right. Right. just in some of those. Um, but this is the reason why life totals went down when they did. This, oh, yeah. This was absolutely needed. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I got some help politically because of it because the other person had 12 life and i had uh three treasures yes that's when i got full swung at (laughs) i said i will not kill you if you full swing at coil with all of your dragons next turn and that was in me responding to (laughs) destroying the marionette master so that he could live potentially or andy would have to just kill him either way i thought i was gonna come out on top here (laughs) and i did not i I came out with less than 10 life at the end of it yeah so i think the deck's a lot of fun um you can certainly upgrade this now this is a commander i am seeing tweets about i'm seeing lots of threads this is pretty nutty 
um there's lots of things you can do in loop and just casting from uh i like it a lot yeah. would i build this i don't know if i would build it i already have two rakdos decks that i play regularly so mm -hmm. i just i don't think i want a third but this is not a strategy that i have playing things from exile um i do think that the two decks that we played in my opinion, are probably the two strongest decks of the four, but the way that the red-green deck played, mm -hmm. it's, it's not far off. No. I just think that it, some people not, might not have seen such a good showing, but we also were playing for stream and we wanted to show the decks off mm -hmm. and not just end the game. Yeah, I wanted to see what things would do, and then I was scared uh, after I let things go too far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, honestly, I think there was an early permanent that the red-green player got down uh very early in the game that helped all of that happen exactly uh and we'll and we'll get to that we'll get there um but i i did want to i did want to mention i really really like the talisman of indulgence reprint in this in this rakdos precon something that did need to need a reprint before this so happy yeah about that. I, I i appreciate that i like i like i mean i'll be honest every time i see arcane signet just sign me up. Yeah, let's I mean, do at it. this point. And <laughs> Felwar Stone. I love my love me some Felwar Stone. Felwar Stone's in here. So this had Vandal Blast as well. Vandal mm. Blast, which is, it's, I think this is the fourth printing. Probably, probably the third. That's actually a real one because I, I don't think it was thoughtful in. Um, I think it was in one of the box sets, the Arch Enemy. I feel oh, like it was in Arch Enemy. Probably. Blast. That's. That's far less open than this. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I did not also overload a Vandal Blast because it literally only hurt Coil's that deck. That is correct. Coil had like four artifacts, and I think the other two might have had a treasure. And there was a Command Sphere at one point yeah. that I remember, but it was only going to hurt Coil. And I yeah. said, nope, I will hold this. And I removed one of your life games. You Basilisk Collar. I removed that, but then you had the other one. I was yeah, like, okay, I, well, I it is what it is. I actually cast it from the top of my library, yeah. Could, could have been worse. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. So yeah, and and there's, you know, some, you know, Chaos Warp, it got reprinted. It's not particularly expensive, but it's always nice to have another Chaos Warp sitting around. Um, bit, 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 Blast. Bit, bit, minus Blast. <laughs> Bit bituminous blast uh, is a card that I haven't seen in a very long time. Um, I had never seen it because I didn't know how to pronounce it. It was in the in the uh, the the cascade, the four color cascade deck with Yidris. Okay. So I owned like one of them somehow in a deck, and uh, I really like that that they are throwing cards like that in there. Yeah, I mean, Throws of Chaos was from Modern Horizons too, correct? It's just, or is it the, modern, first, modern the first Modern Horizons? Modern Horizons. Yeah, mm -hmm. just it just cascades and just has retrace. Ah, I retrace. cast that three times that game. Love that retrace. It's yeah, amazing. that was great. That was it's, great. The one good thing about having thirty nine lands in your precon is having retrace. Yep. All right, so now we're going to start talking about the decks that we did not play. Yes. played against so decks that maybe we aren't as familiar with but you know we're looking at the, we we saw what we saw and we're looking at the precons and and the deck list here so let's talk about dungeons of death which by the way is the deck that won the spoiler pod. spoiler it won it won yeah if you it was cool the way that it won too if you, if you watch if you watch that game for the first two hours you won't you won't think that but you watch it for that last hour, and you're going to get there. Okay, so it's led by Sephiris of the Hidden Ways. So Sephiris is a human wizard 2-3 for white, blue, black, which is our Esper colors. Uh, this says, whenever one or more creature cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, venture into the dungeon. This ability triggers only once each turn. And also has the ability of whenever you complete a dungeon, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Um, so this deck is all about venturing into the dungeon, right? Exactly, which you would not have seen had you watched this game. That is correct. Uh, this deck ventured into one room. <laughs> we entered into the into the Lost Mine of Foundelver. Mm -hmm. And that is where... Uh, oh, is it a scry? I think it's a scry one. It's a one. scry one. It was too strong, which is why... Too powerful. OP. OP. Had to had to wipe that board uh, real, real quick. <laughs> oh so we didn't get to see a ton of things that this deck uh, could do when it comes to venturing into the dungeon. Um, but you did get to see some of the... You know, I, I don't I don't remember seeing actually a reanimation spell cast by by Andy on this one, but I remember you casting Unburial Rites. I did, so I did play a Chaos Wand and I kept choosing the Sephiroth deck because it has very neat spells. Mm -hmm. I cast a Vanish into Memory also from 
that graveyard uh, to draw cards as well. I just, it, this Umberio Wright's very cool card. Uh, we saw Utter End Victimize. Um, these cards, these uh, we didn't see the Victimize, but we saw the Utter End take out some problematic things from the, from the red-green deck. Um, but we did not see many creatures die. But we did get to see this one of the one of the legendary creatures that comes in the deck make a showing. So Min Wily Illusionist was cast. So a one three uh, gnome wizard for one blue blue that says when you draw your second card each turn, create a one one blue illusion creature token with this creature gets plus one plus O for each other illusion. So at one point I think there were two illusions. So they were um, they were two ones. Mm -hmm. So they weren't. I mean, it, it was going to start going eventually. And it said, whenever an illusion you control dies, you may put a permanent card with mana value less than or equal to that creature's power from your hand onto the battlefield. I remember he got a free Felwar Stone with uh, the death trigger after swinging one of these illusions and someone blocked because they didn't want to take some damage. Yeah. So, so Min, Min we got to see and um, what it did. I mean, it made two creatures at least. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, I mean and that we, does stuff. And we've talked about this creature before. This this is the creature that does go infinite with Maloku. Um, yeah, it can. It's a very it's a very um, combo centric commander itself. Legendary mm -hmm. creature. Yeah, um, we did actually see Hamo Pashar, one of the other legendary creatures, uh, show up as well. After we entered, though. After the we entered mind. and there was no more Dungeoneering going on. So Hamo Pishar Ruin Seeker is a one white blue human wizard 2-3 that says room abilities of dungeons you own trigger an additional time. So had there been a second venture with Hamo Pishar out there, I'm sure we would have seen two treasures get made or two goblin tokens get made or whatever the second step of that dungeon is. Um, but I, I also really like the the reprint of Wayfarer's Bobble. We finally got it. We finally got the Wayfarer's Bobble reprint um, so that it's it's under three dollars. Now you can get it for two seventy five, according to this this price I'm checking here. And it's got some really brand new art that I kind of like. Uh, it kind of looks like a trinket that's just kind of thrown together with a bunch of stuff you found in the forest on the way. Um, so this is uh, if I if I do open my my pre-con this will be the first time i ever owned a wayfarer's bob ah. actually never owned one before so let's talk about how this deck actually won sure so life totals were dwindling mm -hmm. they were i believe uh four mm -hmm. i had four mm -hmm. i believe you had seven i did and then there was an 11 there was so four seven and 11 and a grave endeavor was cast so it's an instant for five black black that says roll 2d10 and choose one result Return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield with the number of plus one plus one counters on it equal to that result. Then each opponent loses life and you gain life where X is the other result. There was a 10 rolled. And so um, uh, Coil and I died to the 10, which was chosen for us to lose life. Yep. And, and then the other person went from, from 11 to 1. And then um, it just it just swung with a one of blazer. the two. <laughs> Uh, a simple cloud blazer cloud blazer uh to to take the win which was it was so funny because we sat there going and i think it was said this uh this deck is gonna take it i, I we just have a feeling yeah. and uh you know you roll a 10 on grave endeavor to have each opponent lose one quarter of their entire life mm -hmm. uh, it kind of does it. and you had gained life i think at least twice it's twice yeah, i've gained i gained eight life throughout eight the, life that game the whole game yeah. okay so it, or no it was no, oh, it was four and then six. So it was 10 life total. Yeah. Because the second time I swung with the hammer, the Basilisk Collar doesn't give any bonuses, but the hammer gets plus two, plus two. So you're right. So, so you had gained a little life. Mm -hmm. I had gained a little, and I don't know if the red green deck had gained. Yeah, Did they, it gain? gained, they gained a lot in one turn, and I don't remember Oh, how. yeah, yeah. It was the Shamanic Revelation oh, yeah. with a bunch of Dargons. They gained like... 20 life or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it, it, it was a lot. It was a lot of life. It was a lot of life. But I do really like this Grave Endeavor. I mean, it, I, I think it's definitely a, a, one of those reanimation spells that people need to look at and say, you know, is seven mana too much for a reanimation spell? There's a bunch of five mana reanimation spells that I like to run. Six mana reanimation spells if they can bring more than one creature back. So does seven mana having instant speed and having a a gary a gray merchant type of effect a drain effect at the end gonna do it maybe you want to run this in like a reanimation deck where you're gonna bring back veto thorn of the dusk rose so that when you do drain you get an extra hit with right. the veto or something i'm sure there's some sort of combo um don't be deterred by the seven mana i think this reanimation spell is better than people yeah. think and the secondary commander here is neolore so it's a three five horror for two and then white blue black and it says when it enters the battlefield for each opponent tap one untapped creature you control when you do gain control of target creature that that player controls with power less than or equal to that tapped creature's power 
for as long as you control this creature. So it's a lot of text, but you can tap a creature and just steal a creature for as long as you control Neolor. So it's it's tough unless you're giving it hexproof or you know ward or something. It doesn't come with ward or mm-hmm. anything. And it says whenever you attack with a creature an opponent owns, um, you gain two life and that player loses two life. Yeah. Personally, I do like this commander more than the face commander. Okay. But I don't particularly like stealing people's things mm-hmm. because it feels bad. And See, if someone's playing a Voltron deck, mm-hmm. it's they're done. Oh, for sure. Well, until they remove it, right? It's just it's, But then they have to use the <clears throat> removal on their own for sure. and it feels even worse. For sure, for sure. Uh, but think about this. You can use some justification. You sit down at the table with your with your Nylor deck and people are like, "Oh, we don't want we don't want to play this because you're going to steal everyone's." Like, but think about think about tracking this commander in your tracking document. One word. No title. No Nylor. That's it. There is no more to the title. Oh my gosh, there's not even a comma. No commas, no punctuation. I, I I'd spell it wrong, I bet. <laughs> I'd spell it three different ways, but it's fine. This is great for tracking yes. my lore. I would track this. So this deck, I mean, this deck's fun. It has a couple of good reprints. We've got we've got a lightning greaves here. I um yeah, Wayfarer's Bobble. A movable rod's a really cool one. That's not it's not reprint, but that's that's a really cool new card there. Um Baleful Strix is in this. Uh Phantasmal Image, great reprint. That one's really, really good. It's I mean a, it's a really great reprint. When it enters the battlefield, it enters as a copy of any creature, except it's also an illusion. And then it does have the illusion text where it becomes a target of a spell. You have to sacrifice it, but just an ETB of something that's really cool. Um, and it's any creature on the battlefield, not just any creature you own. Right. So. And and swords to plowshares. I like a solid uh, exile. So Everyone needs their swords. Give me my, just give me my my solid. And the la- the lands, again, there's there's 39. Um, I I would immediately remove two. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's like they, they want you to have an experience where you're never going to miss a land drop, but they keep making these commander decks stronger and stronger and making more card advantage where... They can they can chill a little bit on the lands. Well, I think they're also supposed to be teaching we shouldn't be cutting down to thirty four in all instances. And Not a in lot all of people instances. start at a lot of people start at thirty four and go down to thirty two and mm. because they're playing faster and That's stronger. True. And if you're playing at a power level for this for an enjoyable game, they're saying please start around here. Sure. But I think you're good to cut some of these. For sure. I mean, yeah. it, like you have Soul Ring, Felwar Stone, Arcane Signet. Yeah. yeah, no, for sure. All right. So moving on to our last deck here. This is Draconic Rage. Mm. So this is led by Vrondis, Rage of the Ancients. So it is a 5-4 Dragon Barbarian. Uh, for three red green and it has enrage whenever vrondis rage of agents is dealt damage you create a five four red and green dragon spirit creature token with whenever this creature deals damage sacrifice it and then it says whenever you roll one or more dice you may have vrondis deal one damage to itself and there is a good amount of dice rolling like this this uh there's there's a card in here uh bucknard's purse yes bucknard's purse it made it around the table twice in our game by the way now, it, it did originate in the esper deck actually though it bucknard's started purse. but it, and it's not in this deck right but, but i think it was also in, in your deck in, in the the yeah prosper the deck. Yep. The, yes i didn't draw it but um so this deck was all about making a bunch of large creatures and swinging with them um i mean that's really what we saw from For sure. what we saw it was just play big things and and then swing with them i do think that the game was put into hyperdrive because of a very new enchantment called barbarian class a card that we were not super high on when we did the the episode it was like but you, it was you put it in decks that do dice rolling that's you what we do, said but but it's just redundancy which i think is also something we said but it is redundancy that does cost um six mana right so it's one to make it so that it doesn't do anything that your deck probably is doing at all. And then adding one more, it's probably still not doing anything your deck is doing because it's dice rolling. Mm -hmm. And then when you pay three more, your creatures have haste. Right. So So for six mana, for six mana, you get an enchantment that gives you haste, which you can certainly do cheaper or on creatures. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's the, uh, uh, the Praetor, 
the red praetor. Urabras. Urabras, which gives haste. Yeah. You can uh, throw anger in your graveyard. Anger in your graveyard. There's creatures that you can tap them for mana when it's spent to cast a creature spell. That creature gains haste. There's yeah. other creatures that just have tapped to give a creature haste. Right. Or or ETB, they get plus two plus But you're also haste. in red green. So if you have a reserve list card called Concordant Crossroads. Is, is it, it reserve list? I don't think. No, it's not Maybe reserve it's not. List. It's just really expensive. It's because it's only been printed twice. It's just really expensive. Yeah, yeah you're right. You could put a Concordant Crossroads in to give all creatures haste, I guess. I mean, you mm-hmm. are giving your opponent's haste. Yeah, that's probably in, okay. In that game, you. though, it wouldn't have done much for us. No. I didn't. Well, <laughs> no, for me, it might have. For me, it might have. I think I swung once because my creature was goaded. Now, if I knew my commander had vigilance, I would have swung way more. <laughs> <laughs> but that didn't happen. So we got to see this deck do... Uh, honestly, it did a lot, and and I think a lot of the damage came specifically from a reprint, uh, a very good reprint, Scourge of Velkus. Mm-hmm. So a four four dragon with flying says whenever it or another dragon enters under your control, it deals X damage to any target where X is the number of dragons you control. Now again, we were putting on a show and a stream. We wanted to show it all off because you certainly could have used the five and then the four and then the six or whatever because it 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 just gets bigger if right. you make. It could have just hit one person's face multiple times. We mm-hmm. took out some creatures. For we, sure. we did some to face. Um, that and then um, there was a huge dragon that was making dragon tokens. And uh, I, and well, I, well, the dragon tokens are made by Vrondas. So Vrondas was making the dragon tokens every well, time. Well, there was we the one because dice. of the monarch. Ah, the the despot, the 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 depot. Dragon, welcome to Dragon Depot, Skyline Despot, the seven mana dragon for five red red, five five flying. This says when Skyline Despot enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if you're the monarch, create a five five red dragon creature token with flying. And this one doesn't have the text of sack it when it deals damage. This one sticks around. Oh yeah, you just you just keep them. And luckily, if you want to call it luckily, the <laughs> barbarian class was was leveled up to level three to give everything haste so that anytime Nick had a creature out, it was swinging, it was tapped. So it's like, yeah, it's fine. We could still get in at him and take the monarch from him so that he couldn't make those five fives every single turn. Um, but he was still making five fours every single turn with his commander. So um, I, I know you had mentioned uh, the, the dragon that's the uh, uh, Scourge of Alcas to do the ETB. There is a little bit of redundancy built in here too. They have a uh, War Storm Surge on the enchantment, six mana enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. If this had been down, it would have been lights out, game over. I think because each one dealing five damage every single time it entered the battlefield would be rough. On, on top of also the Scourge, mm-hmm. <laughs> so it would ten Oof. on each potentially ten, and then. And then six plus whatever the power is. Yeah. the So Shamanic Revelation card that I actually, I really like. You draw a card for each creature you control and then it has Ferocious. You gain four life for each creature you control power four or greater. I think when it was cast, every creature they had was power four or greater. And I think they had five creatures. Yeah. So I, I think it was 20 life they gained <laughs> and, and drew five cards. Yeah. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. And, and in slower games like this, this deck it definitely outclassed a lot of the thing. My, mm-hmm. my creatures weren't even comparable. No. And I could make a bunch of rats, which yeah. I was able to do. And, and your commander has death touch. Not that you ever really wanted to block with it because no. it would die. But on, on top of it, the, the second level of barbarian class, every time a die was rolled, uh, Nick was able to give his creatures menace and plus two plus oh. So your 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 one creature and my one creature, because that's really our decks weren't weren't really pumping a bunch of creatures out on the battlefield, weren't able to block it regardless. So it, it was tough uh, to go up against that. We had to use a lot of removal and, and they even played cards that were so resistant to removal. We saw Neverwinter Hydra get resolved. Neverwinter Hydra and XX green green. Uh, when Neverwinter Hydra enters the battlefield, you roll X die and uh, you take the sum of all of those die. And that's how many plus one plus one counters Neverwinter Hydra comes on the battlefield with. And Neverwinter Hydra itself has Ward 4. Um, so this ended up being a 6-6 six, six trampler that we couldn't target remove. We had to do a board wipe to finally get rid of it. But this was coming in and doing six damage every turn because no one was blocking it because it has trample and we didn't want to lose our creatures. Yeah. So it was really tough to, I mean, that this thing was, this deck was really what was hyper, hyper speed in our game, uh, swinging out and doing and so much damage. And this was the deck that I had to nuke oh, with yeah. all of my artifacts with the marionette master after that 20 life gain i was like we are going to have issues and i will say there were two points where i could have killed coil and there were like <laughs> three points where he could have but we were like the 
It's like done. No, no. absolutely no. not. Uh-uh. We should. We gotta. We gotta keep going. We gotta keep going. We, gotta, we play for the W. Which, we don't play for fair, number two. To be fair, usually one of us would just take each other out. But in recent months, mm-hmm. I don't think we have been. No. And that game particularly, it was three on one for probably two times around. The oh table. yeah, definitely. It was like we need to. We need to find the answer. But this deck, it. It doesn't have. A, it has more ramp looking at the deck list than I thought it had because it wasn't. It wasn't ramping it was yesterday. Um, you know, this deck has explore to play an additional land and draw a card. It has rampant growth to search your library for uh, a basic and put it on the battlefield. We have cultivate to put one to your hand and one onto the battlefield tapped. Um, I also like. Um, it's it's not I guess ramp itself, but this the reprint of Return of the Wild Speaker. I mm-hmm. really like that card to draw cards equal to the greatest power among non humans you control, which. Uh, even if it's just your commander, you're drawing five, pay five, draw five. I would pay five, draw five. For sure. Um, otherwise, you give non-humans plus three, plus three till end of turn, which I would also turn all of my five some things into eight some things. Oh, yeah. Big time. So... And you can see some of the ramp. I mean, this is a this is a dragon themed deck. If you didn't pick up on that, and you can see some of the ramp in just like the dragon cost reducers, like Dragon Lord Servant, uh, reducing your dragon spells by one, and Dragon Dragon Speaker Shaman, uh, reducing your spells by two. Um, and and even uh, we haven't gone over the alternate commander. Uh, it speaks, you know, purely two dragons um, with cloth unrivaled ancient. It's a five. Five red green, you get a four four flying haste dragon. It says whenever it deals uh, or whenever it attacks, you add X mana in any combination of colors where X is the total power of attacking creatures. Spend the mana only to cast spells, and, and until end of turn, uh, you don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. So, this is to ramp out all of your other big dragons. Uh, we didn't get to see this. Uh, and honestly, I'm not sure. I think Vrondis is a better commander to to build around because I think it has way more potential to become its own deck, uh, where I think the commander for this particular tech might actually be better if it was Clouth Unrivaled Ancient. I also don't know if this is the first legendary creature that has Enrage, but I feel like it is. And it, I just like having I just like having a legendary creature for each mechanic. It's unnecessary. Mm-hmm. It really is. But I just I actually really like this commander mm-hmm. a lot. I do too. So talking about all four of these decks now, the last couple of minutes, let's talk about, let's rank them, right? If we were to rank them, favorite to least favorite, including all factors, not just reprints. I I will say I I would put the Aura's deck as first, only because I do like, I like the reprints and Mm -hmm. I think that's valuable. But I think I'd put this one second and Prosper third. So I'd put the Dragon second, I'd put the Rakdos one third, and then I would put the Esper one last, only because the Esper mechanic itself is so parasitic in that it wants a mechanic that has literally only existed in a single set and we might not revisit for a really, really long time. Mm -hmm. And the commander itself is the only thing that I guess really needs to matter because you can just venture into the dungeon if you just loop something dying and right. coming back. In which, in which case, you know, that's just that's just my opinion. Sure. I I personally didn't enjoy um, that theme. Sure. Yeah. I will say, looking at the face commanders, I definitely thought the Esper one was going to be my favorite because it looked like graveyard theme, and that's my style. Um, but looking at the entire deck lists, I think the or I think I have to say. The equipment and aura ones because those reprints are so good in there that it, it it's like passes the the ten out of ten scale on reprints. So because of that, definitely going to be the number one. Hundred uh, percent agree with you. The Gruel deck as number two. The Dragon deck Prosper as number three. Very close though, I think, to number two because of how cool of a commander Prosper is. And I didn't give any love to the Beholder until I actually saw it on, on the field. That Beholder is really cool. Karazakar. To see. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and the Esper deck in it in in its whole not super great, but uh, definitely I already play the face commander of the Esper uh, deck in another one of my decks. And I play Wolfgar from the Gruel deck in another one of my decks. So I'm already pulling pieces out of these. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm finding homes that uh, we'll get to play with with cards that maybe are unoptimal. I also like that there is no um, Dockside level card here. Sure. That's making one of the decks ridiculously overpriced. I, for I, a single card. I do think that there is one card in the Equipments and Auras deck that is going to increase in price that I really, really like, um, and that is Mantle of the Ancients. Uh, it's a five-mana enchant creature you control. When it enters the battlefield, return any number of target aura and or equipment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to the enchanted creature. And then enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one for each aura and equipment attached to it. I think this is going to be... Uh, 
a card that everyone is going to have to throw in every single one of their Voltron decks. I think it's too strong. It's more graveyard recursion, which is one thing that you really, really beg for in those Voltron decks when it comes to equipments and auras. Um, and I don't think that card is going to be Dockside Extortionist power level, but I do think it's going to end up going up in price. Do you think even close in price? I mean, there's no, 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 no way no. it I think hits this, more than 15. I right? don't think it'll go. I don't, I don't think it'll go too much past 10. But okay. yeah, I think what Dockside started at around 10 maybe 10 to 15 just like when the when the deck I, came out i don't actually remember to I, be fair i wasn't on the I, podcast back then i, I was would, listening to the episode i would have to go look at the actual price trending there but yeah i mean jumping up to 50 oh uh, yeah i'm glad there isn't one of those where one deck is going to be selling at you know potentially 80 to 90 dollars at an lgs because they can't mm-hmm. keep a single one in stock right for you know a a um a fierce guardianship a right dock side we I, I don't feel that there's one deck that is so significantly overpowered that the rest couldn't even keep up no, with, definitely with the value or whatever it did. Because I don't I don't know if even I wouldn't even say go as far as saying the Gavi one was like that. It just it felt you're like I it have, did feel that way. I have money mm-hmm. in my hands. I have value. So overall, I like them. I um in the I guess if I were to put these in the rankings of precons, mm-hmm. I, I I don't think any of these hit the top for me. I think um, I like them, but I, I still am perhaps just the strategies surrounding these. I favor previous uh, Commander Precons. Okay. I, I, I enjoyed these. Um, I think the last Precons I got to play right out of the box were probably the Ikoria Precons, um, which I also enjoyed. Uh, but um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they're particularly my favorite. I don't know if anything can really beat like my first year of of going into Commander and it was like Planeswalkers as Commanders and that was really exciting. People didn't love the decks, but I did. Aminatu and Sahili Rai. Um, yeah, the the new, the, it was that 2018 yeah, Commander decks. Yeah, Lord Wing Grace was in there and I thought that was a really cool cycle. A lot of people complained um, about power level disparity and stuff, but I didn't really know about any of that stuff back then. So I loved it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Well, that's it for this week. We want to thank you all for listening. If you want to contact me directly, I'm on Twitter at AT Flory. And I'm on Twitter at worm coil engine. And of course we want to give a special thanks to our producer, Ryan. Thank you so much. And to Chris Wolf, who takes care of all of our thumbnails. We appreciate you. And to all you listeners out there, we will catch you next time. In one week. Yeah, probably one week. Seven days. Yeah, you'll get it. You'll you'll hear you'll get a notification as long as you hit that bell icon on YouTube. Or it'll just tell you on iTunes if you're just listening there. And Spotify probably has something too. They probably all do. Yeah. Whatever it is. Now you know which uh, podcasting apps we personally use. <laughs> iTunes all day. Yeah, YouTube. Thank you. <laughs>